Hey guys, today's video is going to be about Biozen and also about electrosmog and as much information as I can pack into this video of electrosmog and what, how far the information or science is going because when you tell people about electrosmog it does sound maybe as pseudoscience because you do not have the gold standard as if, let's say, radiation. So without further ado, let's get started. All the links are going to be down below as well for what I'm covering today. So this from the Biozen brochure is one of the pages that basically shows how Biozen works. This is in 2015, Dr. Claude Bartels. He did a research with the title, The Influence of Electromagnetic Radiation on Human Tissue with Special Consideration of the Effect of Magnetic Field Gradients. Uh, Basically, it says it appears to be problematic that these tiny gradients in it irritate the magnetite crystals inside our brains. When irritated, the brain stops the production of certain repair proteins and hormones, which usually provide a natural protective shield against radio frequency. If this protective shield is missing, the DNA is damaged after a certain period of time, and our body reacts with stress. Biozen flattens these gradients and stimulates a flat natural magnetic field. As long as protective shield is active, the magnetite crystals are not irritated and the process works as usual. Now this is the conclusion from the Biozen brochure, not from the actual study which we're going to go into on the next page I go into. So here's just an example of without Biozen, the, showing the you know irritation or the stress that's caused to you, we're, let me use the words from here. It says the magnetic field gradients irritate our organism. It reacts with stress because of damages done to the DNA. Now he says here with Biozen, by smoothing out the peaks, a natural magnetic field is simulated. The protective shield remains in order and our organiz organism does not react. Uh, examination of water crystals. I'm just going to go over this real quickly. Here's the structure of water. The destroyed structure after 15 minutes of cell phone use and here's the structure with Biozen. So it's not saying it's a perfect picture, but it does assist from the damage that does come from e EM. Uh, here's something with blood cells with 15 minutes on a cell phone, forms of abnormal blood modified hematopoietic, I don't know that word, after mobile telephony with bi without Biozen. So it goes through the steps of the 15 minutes of the phone call and then when you go with Biozen, it has almost healthy blood with the Biozen. So again, it's not saying that it's the Shangri-La, it's just saying that it does help. Uh, ECG, we'll go past this. Water molecules, this one I'm not too fluid in, but there, I guess this idea was found by, was given a Nobel Peace Prize, or Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2003, P. Agri and Roderick McKinnon. So you can go check them out in regards to this or look at the actual brochure here and do your further research. Um, now there is a certificate on the balancing effect of on a magnetic field. So how biozen levels out the peaks of magnetic fields. This is protecting for a human organism. Our organism uses frequencies, low frequencies, 0 to 30 hertz for internal communication. So the frequencies that cell phones emit in this range interfere with the communication continuously. So the measurement certificate is from 2011. It says the results show Biozen balances out magnetic fields. The compensation ranges up to 0.4 microtesla. That is quite a lot when you consider the magnetic field peak of the installed antenna is 2.4 microtesla. The worse the environment conditions are, the more powerful Biozen becomes. The measurement certificate is supervised by the Bureau of Veritas Inspection Certificate. They are 901 ISO 9001 certified, so they do receive third-party audits. Now, you protect your body. Many devices that use electrical energy near us create magnetic field. Extremely low frequency magnetic fields have a negative impact on our body. Protect yourself. So an example of some of the devices would be smartphones, tablets, laptops, a desktop computer, a router, and a power supply. So to put the Biozen sticker on there, they're advising to do so. From what I'm reading in the Q&A on the website for Biozen, the closest you can get to the battery on your devices seems to be the rule of thumb. 
Now, here covers more of the certification and some of the scientifically verified information. So, again, the Bureau of Vera Veritas certificate is ISO 9001. It says risks by e-smog. Medicine and science show that radiation from cell phones facilitates and triggers the following harmful effects. Headaches, a warm sensation behind the ears, restlessness, sleep disturbances, irritated eyes, clouding of the eyes, lens, cataracts, difficulty concentrating, learning problems, and memory impairment. Now, Biozen says it protects the human organism 24-7 for all your electronically powered devices, no matter how or why you use the device. Now the scientifically verified information that Biozen protects you against mobile radiation scientifically and medically proven. It reduces magnetic field gradients, defends against changes in your blood profile, and lowers your body's stress levels. That's about it for the brochure. Let's go on to the study. Now this study is 84 pages so I'm just going to go ahead and go to the conclusions. Let me scroll down. Boom, boom, boom. Summary and conclusions. Okay. So I'm just going to read through this part of it right here. And we're going to go on to the next page. Actually, I'm going to include one more part as well. Okay. It says, there are influences that demonstrate, that demonstrate in a variety of tissue and cell cultures. There are also medical conditions that can be both improved and aggravated by electromagnetic radiation. Here it is not about radiation from radio waves, electromagnetic radiation. This radiation is distinct from x-rays or radioactive radiation in that it is athermal, that means it does not create heat, that's one of the issues with x-rays, and non-ionizing. Extends over wide frequency ranges from a few hertz to THC, which I believe is terahertz, can trigger not only one-on-one -on -one phenomena, but also second and third sequences in the tissue by generating harmonics when passing through the tissue that then actually produces damaging effects and they can interact with the Earth's magnetic field at certain frequencies and thus, for example, interferes with ion transport through the cell membrane, ICR effect, and that the frequency itself triggers the intensity of an interaction, the a day window. Uh, below here it says, the decisive factor in the health of the individual is that they no longer carry on as if it's business as usual, but open their mind and take responsibility for the operation of a radiation source. It is not only the thermal effect that is damaging, as with overheating of the tissue by radioactive radiation or intense x-ray diagnosis. If you've been to a doctor before, typically they're reluctant to go after x-ray to x-ray to x-ray because there's proof and you do have, let's say, a gold standard of evidence to show not to continuously use x-rays. Because we simply do not expose ourselves to this type of radiation, this danger is well known. And, but the new threat is, relevant, is the relevant frequency of the weak, non-ionizing, athermal radiation. So the argument is not the heat radiation, for example, from x-rays, but is the non-ionizing and athermal, not heat, radiation that comes from devices like cell phones, tablets, baby monitors, etc. Uh, they do point out children are most at risk. This study is going to be placed on the links below as well. It's 84 pages of multiple studies. There's a lot, a lot of information, conclusions, abstracts. It's just a lot of information. It takes a lot of time to read and digest. I figure I'm probably going to have to read this 10 or 20 more times to be able to really speak the game and have a conversation with, let's say, in doctor talk. Because it's not only going to be looking at this, there's so many different words and everything that it's going to lead me to go researching. It's like reading the CFR or some type of legal document. There's just so much information that you really have to take time and grasp everything. All right. Now let's go ahead to PubMed. This study, done by the Department of Environmental and Radiological Health Science at Colorado State University, says melatonin metabolite excretion amongst cellular telephone users. I'm just going to read the purpose and the conclusion. You can go ahead and again, the links are down below to read the rest. The relationship between tel cellular telephone use and the excretion of melatonin metabolite 6, this long word, sulfate, 
was evaluated in two populations of male electric utility workers. Study one was at n equals 49, and in study two, n equals 77. Now, the conclusions is exposure related reductions in 6 OHMS, which is the melatonin metabolite 6 hydroxymelatonin sulfate. Okay, excretion were observed in study two, so we're talking about study two, where daily telephone users of greater than 25 minutes was more prevalent. Prolonged use of cellular telephones may lead to reduced melatonin production, and an elevated 60 Hz MF exposures may potentiate the effect. Next study. Radiation from wireless technology affects the blood, the heart, and the autonomic nervous system. It says exposure to electrosmog, the word, you know, the argument I'm making is electrosmog is out there and there is a body of scientific evidence that makes at least an argument to look more into it, be careful of it. Do we have the gold standard? I'm not saying that and it does not look like we have the gold standard. I have from my hours and days upon research so far, I've not found something where I can sit there and say beyond a reasonable doubt we have causation, we have the gold standard, all that stuff. All I'm saying is there's a body of evidence to say that this is not pseudoscience and it at least warrants more information. And maybe you should be proactive and myself be proactive ahead of this because it is a science that is just very hard to get the gold standard for. Okay, so generated by electric, electronic and wireless technology is accelerating to the point that a portion of the population is experiencing adverse reactions when they are exposed. The symptoms of electro hypersensitivity, EHS, best described as rapid aging syndrome experienced by adults and children, resemble sim symptoms experienced by radar operators in the 1940s to the 1960s and are well described in the literature. An increasingly common response includes clumping, rouleau formation of the red blood cells, heart palpitations, pain or pressure in the chest accompanied by anxiety and an upregulation of the sympathetic symph nervous system coincided with a downregulation of the parent parasympathetic nervous system typical of the flight or fight response. Provocation studies presented in this article demonstrate the response to electrosmog by physiologic not psychosomatic. Those who experience prolonged and severe EHS may develop Psych wait, psychologic problems, psychologic problems, as a consequence of their inability to work, their limited ability to travel in our high technologic environment, and the social stigma that their systems are imagined rather than real. Again, this link is going to be down below. Let's move on to the next one. It's going to be the last one. Okay, chronic exposure to extremely low frequency magnetic field induces depression like behavior and cortical sterone secretion without enhancement in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis in mice. The only one thing that really stood out to me in this one is it says our findings suggest that the possibility that high intensity and chronic exposure to ELF MF induces and increases in cortical steroid, sterone secretion along with depression and or anxiety like behavior without enhancement of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access. So there's at least some information shown in mice. There's information shown that hey this can reduce your melatonin. Hey there's something to possibly warn about. Again I'm not saying the gold standard. What I'm saying is Biozen is a product. What they choose to do, let's go back over here to where it says it reduces magnetic field gradients, it defends against changes in your blood profile, and it lowers your body's stress levels. So in PubMed, there's even going to be another link I'm going to provide here that has multiple other studies. So you can go ahead and do the research. Figure this out for yourself because it isn't the gold standard. I just want to warrant that for electrosmog, there is at least an argument to say we need to know more and it could be good practice if you take steps to prevent it. And Biozen as a product, they're at least showing in the laboratory with science that they're taking on this to 
prevent the electrosmog from happening. So the argument is there, the information is there, and if you have any other questions, if there's something I missed or any other arguments, feel free to comment down below because I am not a clinical scientist, I'm not a doctor. I do understand how to read papers and information to an extent, but then again, I am not a professional. I can only take this information and connect the dots. So feel free to comment below, ask any questions, mark anything I missed. And if you know you want to know information or you want to find about World GN or more about BioZen as a product, my link is going to be down below for my website. We can go ahead and fill out the form. I'll go ahead and contact you, get you all the information that I can. And if you're looking to buy BioZen, that link is going to be down below. If you're looking to reserve your spot on my team, the Legacy team, that link is going to be down below as well. Beyond that, like, subscribe, have yourself a great day.